This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenna. I love to crochet plushies. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. For today's video, we are going to be making a no sew axolotl. Woo! These baby axolotls are so popular at markets. They're so popular online and they are just the cutest thing ever. I love their little baby body, their little gills, and just like everything about them. They are super fun to crank out. There's so many different color combinations you can do and they really do work up pretty quick. I'm excited to say we'll also be using Hobie yarn for this tutorial. They sent me a bunch of yarn and I am so excited to show you guys the color combination that I picked out. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right, in terms of materials for your mini axolotl, we will need two different colors. So I am using Hobie's Baby Snuggle, specifically in color 06 and in color 18. And I usually like to use contrasting colors with my axolotl. One color will be the main color for the body and the other color will be kind of the highlight color. This is what we'll use for the gills and like the tail decal. So definitely choose two different colors that probably will contrast nicely together. And then you will also need a size five millimeter hook. I am using my pretty sparkly hook and that is also known as size H. You will need two 12 millimeter safety eyes. And then we will also be needing a stitch marker, some tapestry sewing needles, some scissors, and some polyfill. And all right, with that, I think we're good to get into it. Before we jump into the tutorial, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that has thousands of professional templates for you to use to create your very own website. It lets you engage with your audience and literally sell anything online successfully. My favorite feature of Squarespace is that you can create your very own online shop where you offer both digital and physical products. This comes in handy, especially in the crochet world when you wanna sell physical plushies and digital PDF patterns. I also love that Squarespace makes it so incredibly easy to build your own website and design it exactly how you want. They have a drag and drop website builder for you to use so you can easily change up the font, the layout with no coding involved. And then lastly, if you sell a lot in person or you do events such as a market or a pop-up event, you can get a square reader to use at those events so you're able to take in-person sales that will automatically sync with your website and all of your inventory online. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash crochet by Jenna to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and with that, let's get into the tutorial tutorial. So go ahead and grab the color that you will be using for the main body of the axolotl. I'm going to be using this beautiful turquoise green color. Again, this is Hobie's Baby Snuggle and it is in color 06. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. All right, for round one, we are just going to be doing six single crochet into a magic ring. And then I like to put the stitch marker on the last stitch of the round so we can keep track and go ahead and close that magic ring closed. All right, so now for round two, we are going to be doing six increases into every stitch. So you will end up having 12 stitches at the end. For round three, we are going to be doing one single crochet followed by an increase. And we'll be repeating this a total of six times. All right. For round four, we're going to be doing two single crochet followed by an increase. And we'll be repeating this six times. All right, this is what the end of round four looks like. For round five, we are just gonna be doing 24 single crochet around. All right, this is the end of round five. Now, starting in round six, we are going to be making the gills and we will be crocheting it directly into the head right here. So go ahead and grab the secondary color 
Again, I'm going to be using Hobie's Baby Snuggle in color 18 and it is like a darker turquoise so I thought it would be perfect to go along with this color that I have for the main body. So go ahead and open up that and just have it ready. So for round six, we're going to start out by doing five single crochet, but we will be color changing on the sixth stitch. So don't finish the fifth single crochet all the way. So we have one, two, three, four. And since I said we'll be color changing on the sixth stitch, for the fifth single crochet, I'm just going to leave it half done because we want to then go ahead, grab our secondary color, and I am just going to finish the fifth single crochet by bringing in that second color, and I'm going to tie a knot to secure it. And for anyone who hasn't color changed yet or is not totally familiar with color changing, that is how we typically color change in crochet. We will prepare a stitch ahead of time. So this will allow us to have a clean color change. And as you can see, we have five single crochets in our main color, one, two, three, four, five. And by preparing the color change on that fifth single crochet, we are now prepared to use our second color for the sixth stitch. But okay, now for the next step, we are going to be chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the second chain from the hook, which is this chain right here, we will be crocheting four single crochet down the chain. So one, two, three, and this will be the fourth, but we will actually be wanting to color change into the next stitch. So I am not going to finish the fourth single crochet. So like we just did earlier, I am gonna go ahead and bring the main color in and pull it through. So I completed the four single crochet, but I color changed on that last single crochet. So we are ready for the next stitch. And that is simply just going to be one single crochet, but we will be color changing again. So I do not wanna finish the one single crochet into this next stitch. So I am gonna go ahead and then bring my secondary color in and bring it through. So then we have a very clean color change. This is our one single crochet in our main color. And then we are going to basically repeat what we just did with this first gill again. So that is why we ended up color changing here after this one single crochet. So just like earlier, I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet all the way down. One, two, three. And then on that last single crochet into that fourth chain stitch, I'm going to color change to my main color to finish the fourth single crochet on that chain. And then I'm going to crochet one into the next stitch. But then again, we will be color changing. So I will go ahead and finish that one single crochet with the, with the color change. And then we're gonna repeat it one more time. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five. I am going to put a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then continue doing four single crochets down. One, two, three. And then in that last single crochet of our chain, I'm going to bring our main body color, color change. And then I am going to do a one single crochet into the next into the next stitch. And since going forward, we will be using the main color, I do not need to color change and I can just finish that. So this is what it will look like when you are done the three gills on this first right hand side and they should be popping out like this. And as you can see with the color changes that we did, it makes it really nice and crisp. And the only color that is our secondary color is the gills. The part in between the gills is the same color as our main color. So that is exactly how we wanted it. So now we are gonna continue and do nine single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And then on that ninth single crochet, we're gonna prepare for a color change since we will be using the secondary color in the next stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off that ninth single crochet by introducing my secondary color. And there you go. So now we are ready to repeat the same step that we did with these gills over on this side. So I'm gonna be chaining five, one, two, three, four, five. In my second chain from the hook, I am going to single crochet down the chain. So one, two, three. And then on the fourth single crochet of the chain, I am going to color change and then do one single crochet into the next stitch and color change and then repeat one, two, three, four, five. Second chain from the hook, one, two, three, four. Color change on that fourth chain. And then single crochet into the next stitch. And then one last time we are going to chain one, two, three, four, five. Second chain from the hook, we're gonna single crochet down the chain. So one, two, three. And then on that last chain, we are going to color change. And then that is our last skill. So I am good to just continue on with our primary color. And there you go. This is what your axolotl will start looking like. We have the three gills and we will finish out this round by doing four single crochet. One, two, three, four. And then go ahead and put your stitch marker on the last stitch. And yeah, this is what your axolotl will be looking like. We can go ahead and cut the secondary color now that we have made the gills because we won't need it until the very end. And then what I like to do is I like to take the tail from the magic ring in round one and I will just like to secure it with a knot with the secondary color tail that we just cut just so it is nice and secure and then I'll cut it short so we clean up some of the inside but yeah here you go this is what your axolotl will look like at the end of round six now round six is definitely the most complex round so just make sure you color change one stitch ahead of time so you have those really nice clean color changes in between each gill those single crochet should match with your main color but all right i think we are ready to go on to round seven so round seven we are just going to be doing 24 single crochet around and just keep in mind that we will be crocheting around the gills so we want to make sure they stay in front so we don't crochet them directly into the body like that but i'll show you guys so let's do why does this look blurry low key okay one two three four five and then our six single crochet will be right here the one in the middle five and then i'm gonna go in six and then the next one will be this one in between these two gills seven and then this will be eight over here eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then 18 will be in between these two gills. 18, in between the gills, 19, and then the last one is right here, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And there we go. This is what the axolotl will be looking like. You will have a nice clean 24 single crochet around and then the gills will be popping out, which is exactly how we want it. We will now be doing round eight, which is two single crochet followed by a decrease. And we will be repeating that sequence six times. For round nine, we are going to be doing one single crochet followed by a decrease. And we will be repeating this six times around. And that's the end of round nine. 
This is what our axolotl is looking like. We are forming the head currently with the previous two rounds. And as you can see, it's really starting to come together. Super cute. All right, for round 10, we are going to be doing one single crochet followed by an increase. And we will repeat this six times around. All right, for round 11, we are going to be making the first front legs. So we'll start out by doing seven single crochet. All right, in the next stitch here, we will be doing a bobble stitch. So yarn over and pull through the first two loops. There will be two loops left on your hook and repeat this again, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. There's now three, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. There's now four, and then one more time, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And now there are five loops on your hook. And now we're going to go ahead and yarn over and pull through all five. And that is how you do a ball stitch. And now we are going to be doing four single crochet and be careful when you do a bobble sometimes you know it gets crowded here so the next stitch is actually looking a little hidden so make sure you keep track that this stitch is actually the next stitch so we're going to be doing one two three four and then we will be doing another bobble stitch and you can kind of use your finger here and pop out this bobble because it was looking a bit hidden, but it should form like the name kind of suggests a little a bulge right here. And that signifies the first little front leg. Okay. But then after we do the four single crochet, we're now going to do a bobble into this next stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and repeat this until I have five loops on my hook which i do and i'm going to yarn over pull through all of them and then we're going to finish by doing one two three four five single crochet and then go ahead and pop out that second little bobble stitch and then there you go this is what it's looking like so far from the bottom we have our two front little feet and then from the top this is what it is looking like super cute guys okay let's stop here and we're actually going to place the eyes and stuff the head so go ahead and grab your 12 millimeter eyes and where i like to place the eyes is between rounds four and five so using the magic ring that's one two three, four. All right. So then I like to align it kind of between these first two gills. So let me do that again. One, two, three, four, and right there. Perfect. That's where I usually like to place this one. And then same thing for the next eye. One, two, three, four. And then you can just double check the placement, make sure it's like pretty even. Yeah, that looks straight. So then go ahead and put the plastic washers in the back to secure your eyes. All right. And then go ahead and grab some polyfill. And I would start stuffing the head because it gets a little hard later on to stuff the head. So go ahead and stuff the head right now as much as you'd like. And then the gills do tend to want to curl on their own. So I like to just go ahead and press down on the tips to make them more straight. And there you go. This is what your axolotl will be looking like after we stuff the head and put on the eyes. Super, super cute, guys. Okay, let's return back to crocheting. We are halfway there. So for round 12 through 14, so the next three rounds, we are just going to be doing 18 single crochet around. So I'll be doing round 12 on camera here. So one, two, three, four. 17, 18. So that is the end of round 12. And just be careful when you are going over the bobble stitches not to double count because then your, your total stitch count will get thrown off a little. So just be careful. You should end up with 18 all around at the end of 
round 12. And then I'm gonna be doing round 13 and 14 off camera, but it's essentially the same exact thing, 18 single crochet around, and I will meet you guys back so we can do round 15 together. All right, I just finished round 14 and this is what it's looking like. Super, super cute. Again, the gills like to sometimes curl on their own. So just push down on the tips to make them more straight. So cute. Okay, we are ready now for round 15. So for round 15, we will be making the second set of legs. So we wanna start out by doing eight single crochet. And then in this next stitch, I'm going to be doing a bobble. Whoops. Two. And then we'll be doing four single crochet. So one, two, three, four. And then in this next stitch here, we will be doing another bobble. And then we will finish off by doing four single crochet. And this is the end of round 15. And this is what the bottom of your axolotl should look like. It's funny from seeing it from the bottom view. It kind of looks like a gummy bear. I could probably come up with like a gummy bear pattern very easily from this. But yeah, you have your four little legs and then... Of course, the front is your axolotl, and it's looking super cute from the side, too. Look at that. I love the little legs. It's so precious. But okay, let's move on. For round 16, it's just going to be 18 single crochet around. 18. All right, and that is the end of round 16. Let's stop here and fill our body with some polyfill. Just because the next round, we will begin decreasing and making the tail. So it, it's kind of hard to stuff going forward. So I'm gonna be stuffing the body really nice. Get it nice and firm. All right, look at our little axolotl, so cute. When you're ready, we will then be moving on and doing round 17, which is one single crochet followed by a decrease. And we will be repeating this six times and that is the end of round 17. For round 18, it is just going to be 12 single crochet around. All right, for round 19, we're going to be doing one single crochet followed by a decrease, and we'll repeat this four times. We'll stop here and add some more stuffing. And going forward, feel free to stuff as we go because we will be making this hole quite small and it'll get a little tricky. All right, for round 20, we will just be doing eight single crochet around. And for round 21, we will be doing one single crochet followed by a decrease. And we'll be doing this two times. And then for the remaining two stitches, we are just going to be doing two single crochet. And now, as you can see, it's pretty small. So if you want to add any last minute stuffing, go ahead, because this is the last time we'll be able to stuff. All right. And then for round 22, which is the last round, we will just be doing six single crochet around. And there we go. Feel free to now take your stitch marker off and cut the yarn leaving a long tail. And then go ahead and grab your tapestry needle, thread it through, and then we are going to be weaving our tail end into the front loops of round 22 so we can close off the tail. This will allow us to create a cinch closure. And then once you threaded the tail through the front loops, feel free to then pull and that will close that little hole shut and then go ahead and weave in the rest of your yarn tail and then cut off the excess. And then I like to use a thicker tapestry needle and just poke that remaining tail through. And oh my gosh, this is what your axolotl will look like at the end. 
Isn't it so, so cute, guys? Look at him. He is just a little baby. And now the next step is optional, but I will show you guys how to add a little bit of frill on the tail. So go ahead and grab your secondary color. And then we will be going right up between rounds 19 and 20. It's usually right at the start of the tail. So maybe right here. Honestly, you can feel free and start the little tail frill wherever you prefer, but I just like to start it right at the top of the tail here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hook through one of the stitches just like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my secondary color and I am going to pull that secondary color through and up onto my hook. So it's like this. And then I'm just going to slip stitch. So now that secondary color is fully on and it is secure with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and do half double crochets all the way down the top of the tail. So I'm gonna yarn over and poke my hook through the next part of the tail, bring up the yarn through the tail and finish the half double crochet. So that's what it will look like. And then I'm just gonna continue doing this all along the top of the tail. And this will make that little decorative tail frill that most axolotls have. And it's just a cute little extra detail. And sometimes it's a little hard to poke your hook through. So just wiggle it a good bit to get it into the stitches. And then I like to continue on and go all the way to the underside of the tail. And then I will stop once we get to basically where we started on the top of the axolotl. I think we are in a good stopping place. It looks like it is right where we started on the top of the axolotl. So I'm gonna cut my yarn, leaving a good bit of the tail so we can weave it in. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my hook through and then go ahead and grab your needle again. And I am just simply going to thread this through the body of my axolotl and poke it out somewhere random. That way it is nice and secure. I'm then gonna take the top part of my yarn tail and do the same thing. I'm gonna weave it into the body and beat up where that excess tail is. And then I'm just going to tie a knot to secure these tails together. And then we can go ahead and cut the excess yarn. And then using my thicker tapestry needle, I'm just gonna poke it through so it will disappear. And then there you go, you are done. Look at that cute little tail frill that we added. So yeah, this is what your axolotl, oop, some fuzz. So yeah, this is what your axolotl will look like once you are fully done. And isn't it just so precious, guys? I am so obsessed with these axolotls. They sell so well at markets and they actually sell really well in my shop. Like people love axolotls. And there's just so many different color combinations that you can do. And yeah, I am so in love and it's a super quick project, honestly, and it's no so. So what more can you ask for? I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I am so in love with these little axolotls. I sound like a broken record, but literally they are my favorite thing to make. And they're just like little baby friends like this makes the perfect little desk friend but all right i think we're gonna wrap it up here don't forget to tag me on instagram if you use my pattern i can't wait to see all of the axolotls that you guys make and i hope everyone has a great rest of their day see you in my next one bye